rock slide that would end in the derailment and crash of the train. I've been doing some investigations out here since I was a teenager and I'm ready to do a PQ episode here. Did you just whisper? Mm -mm. REM pod, REM pod, REM pod. That panicked energy and the panic of the passengers that were on board too. Oh jeez. May still be left behind in this tunnel. And for absolutely no reason, I got chills. I thought I just saw a flash of light over here. That fear, that was running through everybody's minds. Then I know. Wow. Did you just knock this over? Tell Dave if you just knocked this over. We have... You are kidding me! All right, Dave, we are standing outside of the Bonds Creek Tunnel, better known as Tunnel 13. Yes, we are. We are here in a little town, if you want to call it that, of Cornwallis, uh, just outside of North Bend State Park. And all of my life, I've heard different stories, legends about this place because I grew up not too far from here. The haunted history of this tunnel pretty much begins and ends with a tragic day, May 31st, 1956, when a Baltimore and Ohio Railroad passenger train entered Tunnel 13 not realizing that on the other side of this tunnel it would meet a rock slide that would end in the derailment and crash of the train, causing the death of two of the crew members and causing 49 people aboard the train to be injured. Terrible thing, you know, these people probably thought they were going to have a great Memorial Day holiday and right off the face of the earth they went, right down into that creek, unfortunately. Yeah, and now interestingly enough, it is a public walking and biking trail through here and it is known by the locals who come here to exercise, to get into nature and to see things as being a place where strange and unusual things are witnessed. People hear talking, screaming and yelling coming from inside the tunnel when they know no one is in there. Even sights and sounds of phantom trains coming through here have been talked about. We're here tonight to see if we can capture any paranormal evidence relating to the Bonds Creek train accident of 1956. Yes, we are. You want to take a stroll through the tunnel here and, and look at where the accident site was? Yeah, the accident happened right on the other side of the tunnel, so let's walk through and see if we can take a look at it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Before we go inside Tunnel 13, we want to tell you about an incredible event that we've organized. On Saturday, August 13th, 2022, you can join us. Oh God, what was that? What? what was that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh God, what was that? The Foreman Brothers of Paranormal Nightmare. What do people normally do? Run. They get the hell out of the house. We haven't left. Heather Taddy of Paranormal State, Portals to Hell and Alien Highway. Adelaide's Haunted Horizons Ghost Tours from Australia. Oh, hello, the ball's just come off. Hey. And many others at the 2022 West Virginia Penitentiary. Paracon, or Paranormal Convention. There will be exciting and fascinating lectures, meet and greets, vendors and shops, food trucks, ghost tours, and more. Experience and celebrate the paranormal in one of America's most haunted prisons. For more information, you can go to www.wvpentours.com forward slash Paracon. The link is in the description. We'll see you there. All right, let's head inside here. This tunnel's not the longest tunnel that we've ever walked through, but I think it may be the oldest that we've investigated because this one actually dates back all the way to 1853. So they had had 100 years of use for this tunnel by the time that train wreck happened in 1956. So uh, in the 1960s, they came and raised the, the roof of the tunnel upwards. Actually, that helped and probably prevented it from collapsing prematurely or in more recent years. It's in remarkably good condition right now. It really is in good shape. The Park Service does a great job of keeping this up, keeping it safe for everybody. 
but they can't keep the ghosts from being in here. Yeah, I mean, the number of people that have experienced paranormal activity in these tunnels since they were decommissioned are numerous. And some people in the local area are so superstitious about it, they won't even come to the tunnels. So they call it the unlucky Tunnel 13. Who knows, maybe we'll capture some of that activity that they consider to be unlucky tonight. We might, I hope so. You know, with all, all of those claims, like you said, maybe there is something to it. Maybe there isn't. And uh, that's what we're gonna try and find out tonight. And hopefully we can try and make some sort of communication with, you know, the engineer or the fireman that was on board the train who unfortunately passed away right out here on the other opening of the tunnel. Just imagine though, if you're the crew, you're the engineer of that train and you enter this tunnel and it's not that far of a trip from one side of the tunnel to the other, especially if you're in a locomotive moving at a fairly high rate of speed. So you enter the tunnel, not even realizing when you round the bend of the tunnel on the other side, straight out on this other side, which we're looking at right now is a giant rock slide. There's no way the brakeman of that train is going to be able to stop it in time for it to stop before the rock slide. No. So, yeah, I imagine there was a lot of panic involved in that moment with the crew. So that panicked energy and the panic of the passengers that were on board too may still be left behind in this tunnel. We talk about residual paranormal activity. That moment of terror and panic and tragedy might have soaked into the walls of this tunnel and still replay itself to this day. It was very possible, you know, that, that was a, a lot of, a lot of energy that happened right within a quick amount of time and some people lost their lives during that quick amount of time and it's possible that that energy is imprinted here on the land and within the tunnel. Yeah. Switch these lights off here. It's crazy how dark it is inside that tunnel once you walk in there. You yes. lose light really fast. <laughs> but right where we're standing would have been where the train started to derail. Right up ahead here is the bridge. You can see the bridge. Yes. On May 31st, 1956, the BNO Westbound National Limited passenger train wrecked as it emerged from tunnel number 13 at this site. And the engine tumbled into Bonds Creek on the north side of the bridge. The engineer Joseph C. Riley and the fireman Paul R. Hooten were killed in the wreck. 45 other persons on the train were injured in the wreck, including members of the train crew, other railroad employees, and 29 passengers. And you can imagine, as we were talking about, as we walked through the tunnel, the fear that they would have been experiencing as this train derailed, careened off of its course and went over the bridge. It's not that far of a drop, but it would be far enough that you could get seriously injured or killed. Residual energy, we've experienced it in many locations where it's not an intelligent haunting, but energy left behind from a very specific and strong emotional moment in someone's life. So I think tonight, not only are we going to try and communicate with Joseph C. Riley or Paul R. Hooten, the two crew members that were killed, the engineer and the fireman, but also it'd be interesting to see if we can experience that residual energy that was left behind. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because like you said, you know, that fear that was running through everybody's minds of, are we gonna live or are we gonna die? Yeah, it could be why people do hear screams coming from this tunnel at times as well, so. Yes. But it is getting to be the evening hours and while we probably aren't gonna be able to stay too far into the night here at the tunnel, we should probably grab the equipment and get ready to get started here as the sun is getting ready to fall further into the sky towards that horizon line, so. Yes. Are you ready to tackle tunnel number 13 at Bonds Creek, Dave? I'm ready. I've been doing some investigations out here since I was a teenager, and I'm ready to do a PQ episode here. Let's do it. Let's do it. We are getting ready to start the investigation here at tunnel 13 at Bonds Creek, where the fatal train accident occurred back in 1956. We're really excited for this investigation, not just because of the legends and lore and hauntings surrounding this tunnel, but also because we have just recently acquired a piece of equipment that we have wanted to get for over a decade. And we're going to give it the maiden voyage here at Tunnel 13, and that is the thermal camera. As you can see here, I'm rolling on it simultaneously right here on top of the 
on top of my camera rig here. So any place that I point my camera, it is going to register with the thermal as well as my camera here. So hopefully we'll get some good evidence. Hopefully so. I'm excited to get to use this thing tonight. Yep. See what, see what paranormal activity we can pick up on. See if we can capture any heat signatures or cold spots moving inside the tunnel. Ah, did we grab digital recorders? Uh, no. Damn it. Let's see. You want to set this camera up? And then... That way you don't have to carry it all the way back. Yeah. That was close. I think I just saw a bat fly by you. Ah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, it went right by your head. That was perfect. Did you get it? On camera? Yeah. Yeah, on thermal and on night vision. Okay, I'm going to start rolling on this. Okay. I'm going to run to the car and I'll be right back. Okay. I thought I just heard something at the end of the tunnel, though. You did? I think so. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Hello? Was that me? I don't think so. REM pod, REM pod, REM pod. Is there someone over there? If you're over there, can you touch that again? That's very strange because this went off first when I wasn't anywhere near it. Just one time, and then that went off over there. Whoa. Hello? Was that me? I don't think so. REM pod, REM pod, REM pod. Interesting development. What? Um, I set up the REM pod and walked over here and set up the Spirit Seeker not too far past it. Yeah. And I walked away from the Spirit Seeker after I already set it up. And it blinked once. Really? And then once it had blinked, then the REM pod went off. Really? Yeah. That Spirit Seeker never goes off. No. Do you think that camera got it? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. I didn't check the framing to see if it was in. But Spirit Seeker's right there, by the way. Yeah, it would have gotten both of them. Good. Well, whoever made that go off, thank you very much. Unfortunately, I missed seeing it. Is there any way that you could try doing it again so I could see? They are there for you. Do you want to roll on the digital audio recorders and see if we can get any EVP? Yeah. EVP, or electronic voice phenomena, is the experimental practice of recording for spirit voices. Theories have stated that it's believed these voices are spoken at frequencies our ears can't hear until they're captured within the white noise of an audio recording device. This is Dave and Ryan, Tunnel 13, EVP. If you're here with us, we've traveled a long way to come and speak with you. My name is Ryan, and this is Dave. And if you didn't realize, down on the floor, there are lights that it's believed if you walk up to them and touch the lights or the boxes, that it'll let us know that you're here. 
Also in Dave's hand, there's a little orange light that he's holding in his left hand. If you can see him, if you speak into that, we may be able to hear your voice later on or get a message from you. I'll switch you. Okay. Filming angles here. Film down this way, down the tunnel then. Whoops. Come on down and talk to us. Did you know that the rock slide had happened before you saw it at the end of the tunnel? Was it a complete shock to you when you came around the bend of this short tunnel 13? Something moved back here. Back behind that camera. I know it had to pick it up. Come on down this way. Flip your flare down there, see if you see anything. Nothing too out of the ordinary that I can see. Joseph, if you are here with us and you can hear us talking, can you walk up and touch that red light that's on the ground? It'll let us know you're here. Paul, are you here? Now, Paul, I know that the firemen don't get enough credit for what they do. Our friend Jason has worked on the railroad before. He's told us a lot of things. Keeping those fires and the steam engines stoked. You can't let that fire go out or else you'll take it'll take forever to build it again. You got to keep it hot, but not too hot. It's a true art form, wasn't it, Paul? What? It's dark. Yeah, it is. Guys, this is what we're seeing here. Nothing. Ooh. What? It is hot out here, and for absolutely no reason I got chills. Like the hair stood up on my legs. Yeah. If you're here with us, talk to that thing in Dave's hand, please. I just heard a voice. If you're here with us, talk to that thing in Dave's hand, please. I just heard a voice. I just heard your voice. Can you come closer and talk to us? Couldn't make out what you said. Can you come closer and talk to us? I'm waiting for him to come for this screen light. Did you just whisper? Mm -mm. Did you, you heard that, didn't you? Yeah, it sounded like it was behind me. Did you just whisper? Mm -mm. Did you just whisper? Mm -mm. Did you, you heard that, didn't you? Yeah, it sounded like it was behind me. 
If you're outside the tunnel, can you walk across the entrance for us so I can see you? I have a camera that'll be able to see you and take your picture. No more activity on the on the REM pod down there, no? Nothing. Nope, which is very bizarre. Because if it was something naturally occurring. Hazard to guess that it would continue. Somebody come out and talk to us, please. further down down this way yeah yeah well, what do you think do you want to set up and do a spirit box session yeah so, you want to do like an Estes method yeah. I just got an alert that the FLIR was at 50%, so... Okay. Yeah, you wanna maybe set up on the bridge where the actual train cars went over? Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's definitely a great place to set up, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's do it. Alright guys, I am getting ready for this Estes session. Ryan is walking down towards the tunnel. Gonna put my blindfold on, even though it is pitch dark out here, and we'll see what happens. Right over here to my right is where the engine of the locomotive actually went over and down into the creek, which is down below me under this bridge. Okay, so Dave is right back here behind me, and he is getting ready to start listening to the spirit box. He's going to be listening to the sweep through the headphones, but you're going to be able to hear it as well. It's being recorded so that you can actually listen to it with him. But also it helps us, so if we happen to have a voice come through that we can't quite understand, we can review it later. So, um, But he has sensory deprivation, headphones, blindfold, and he's sitting right on the edge of the bridge. And that bridge is where the train wreck occurred. All right, sweeping. All right. Is there anyone here with us right now? Is there anyone that can hear my voice? Give us a sign of your presence by speaking to Dave. Something about water? When the train wrecked, it ended up in the water. Do you remember the water? Yes or no? I thought I just saw a flash of light over here, down this path. Right here. Did you pass away right there? Can you tell me why the train ended up off the tracks? What was here where I'm standing? When the train came out of this mouth of the tunnel, what was right here? Were you in the water? Ah. Uh, what? I accidentally stopped the recording. <laughs> just, just now. <laughs> you want to resync it? Yeah. Resync. 
Davis restarting on the recorder that is recording the S-Box because he accidentally stopped it. That's what happens when it's pitch black out here, you guys. Okay, blindfold on. Sweeping and headphones on. I cannot hear you. Joseph C. Riley, the engineer on the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Are you here, sir? Everybody? I will speak to anyone that is here, but I specifically am trying to make contact with Joseph Riley. Water. Again, it just said water. Is that what you remember, sir? Do you remember the water? Did the water take your life? You heard me. Or you hurt me. I mean, yes, I heard you. I heard you say water, but if you meant who hurt you, or that you hurt me. Who are you speaking to? There was a voice there, but I couldn't make it out. What was the number of the last tunnel that you went through before you passed away? Tell Dave. Tell Dave the number of this tunnel. Then I know. No way. Oh man, are you kidding me? Dude, something just pushed the spirit seeker over. I don't think, I wasn't looking at the camera to see if anything caused it. Did you just knock this over? Tell Dave if you just knocked this over. We have you are hitting me. That is awesome. Thank you for confirming that. Can I pick it up and set it back up right now? I'll have to review that to see, but if that just fell over, that is crazy. There's no breeze out here at all. Stay tuned, because at the end of this session, we'll review the footage to discover what truly knocked over the Spirit Seeker. Was it actually paranormal? The answer will leave us speechless. Set back up where it was. Can you please tell me the number of this tunnel, please? Tell Dave the number of this tunnel. That... I don't know how to explain that. That was set up for... Nearly 30 minutes that had been set up like that. So, why now would it just fall? Very interesting. No breeze at all, like I said, it's like the air is as still as it can be down here. Can you tell me whether or not you can still talk to me from wherever you are. No. No. So you can't speak to us then. But if you can't speak to us, then how did he get that message? There was a voice, but I couldn't make it out. Is it possible to come back after we die?
How's it going? Funny that you took your headphones off. I literally just walked over here. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally just hit the corner of the bridge and put, peeked my hand over the thing and you uh, took the headphones off. That's kind of funny. <laughs> you saying water twice was really weird. The other weird thing that happened was I was standing there. The spirit seeker all of a sudden started to alarm and then it fell over. Really? Like, yeah, like it had been standing up all this time and it fell over. So I was standing there over top of it and I was like, was that you that pushed this over? And that was when you said we have. Wow. With no breeze, completely still. I've not felt a breeze since we got here. Oh, I wish. Today's the most still and humid day of the summer. I'm so anxious to see the footage of the spirit seeker falling over that I decide to stop rolling on my handheld camera and watch it back now before we pack up. Oh, you were actually filming it? Yeah. Oh, wow. What was the number of the last tunnel that you went through before you passed away? Tell Dave. Tell Dave the number of this tunnel. Then I know. Are you serious? Is there anything there? Yeah. What is it? Look at this. Then I know. <laughs> Was that a chipmunk? <laughs> Was that a chipmunk? <laughs> we got ghosted by a chipmunk, y'all. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I think it was or a little mouse. Something came running out of the grass here. Do you see it? I wasn't looking at the screen at all. Actually, it was two mice. They were chasing each other out of the grass. And when they made it to the middle of the path, the first mouse made a sharp left turn, missing the spirit seeker. But its pursuer didn't make that turn and ran full speed into the back of the device, knocking it over and sending both mice sprinting away in a flurry of terror. This is why it's so important to review footage carefully and to be open to all possibilities. In the moment when the spirit seeker fell, mice were the last thing I would have expected to find as an explanation, but that's what it was. And even though we're on a quest for paranormal activity, this footage made our whole day. We'll always remember the night I was tricked by a mouse into thinking I'd captured poltergeist activity and look to it as a lesson as to why you should never jump to conclusions until you've seen it with your own eyes. That's why it brings us a lot of excitement to say that the experience and footage that I thought I'd captured is debunked. I was so excited about it too. I can't wait to watch the footage back and see how excited I was. You are kidding me. Even if we didn't capture really that much paranormal evidence while we were here, we didn't capture any paranormal evidence, we're not sure yet. Even if we didn't capture anything, it was still fun to come out here and investigate a place that you have been in, you've been coming to since you were a kid. Yeah, absolutely. And to come out here to help us further understand our quest, to get back to the basics of investigating and to try out a new piece of equipment while we were out here. Yeah. We hope you guys are excited because next week we have... Ow! You okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. What happened? There's a big old mosquito got me. Oh, man. That hurt. Sorry. Next week, be ready because we are going back to a place that is considered one of the most haunted places in America. It is a classic, a place that you will recognize. Nope. It's been in the field for over a decade, and we're so excited to go back, so be ready for that next week. But until then, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Make sure you like the video and share it with your friends and family because that's all the support that we ask for or we need. But if you wanna support us additionally, we do have a Patreon page, or you can become a member of our YouTube channel. But we'll see you in the next video, in the next episode, on our paranormal quest.